In the textbook, I mentioned that the Z distribution and the T distribution are very similar, but they are discrepant or different when the sample size or the degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1, is relatively small. And what relatively small means exactly, I mentioned in the textbook, anything under 50 is probably where you're definitely going to start getting differences between the Z distribution and the T distribution. So to show you exactly what the t-distribution looks like, well, it depends on the degrees of freedom. And what I've done here is I've created a t-distribution by generating data from a program that is based on degrees of freedom equal to 4,999, which would correspond to a sample size of 5,000. And this is what the t-distribution looks like when you randomly draw 100,000 observations from the t-distribution with 4,999 degrees of freedom. It looks like a normal distribution. It is almost indistinguishable from a z-distribution. This really is essentially identical to a z-distribution. Now, what does it look like when you draw 100,000 cases from a t-distribution with four degrees of freedom, well, it looks very, very different. Now, four degrees of freedom implies a sample size of five, and you can see that it's much more kurtotic. There's much more positive kurtosis here, leptokurtotic. And you can also see that the T values are much larger than what you see in the T distribution, which is essentially the Z distribution here. We go up to a value of about 4.5. That's an extremely unusual observation whether it's a Z distribution or a T distribution with 4,999 degrees of freedom. But in the context of a T distribution with degrees of freedom of 4, there are several cases with T values greater than 4.5. And that's on both sides of the distribution. So the T distribution and the essentially Z distribution here are very, very different because the sample sizes are so different. Or I should say in the Z distribution, it's really a population. But for all intents and purposes, the T distribution with 4,999 degrees of freedom is almost identical to the Z distribution. Now, what if I push out the degrees of freedom to 49? In a textbook, I say anything less than 50, you start to get some differences that you want to pay some mind to. And you can see that with degrees of freedom of 49 or a sample size of 50, the T distribution is pretty similar to this T distribution which is essentially identical to the Z distribution, but it's still different. There are still more cases larger than, say, a T value of 3 than you would see in this T distribution, which is almost identical to the Z distribution. There aren't a lot of cases here. These are all 100,000 observation in each distribution, but there aren't very many cases over here that are greater than 3 or less than negative 3. But in the degrees of freedom 49 t distribution, there's a bit more. The tail's still a bit fatter above 3 and negative 3. And to represent these results in numerical form, I've calculated some basic descriptive statistics for each of these distributions. And you can see that with degrees of freedom 4999, the mean is equal to 0, a standard deviation of essentially 1.0, and that's the identical to the z distribution. Kurtosis and skew are essentially zero. They're very, very low, which is also true of the Z distribution. And the T values that correspond to a percentile of 2.5 and 97.5 are negative 1.96 and positive 1.96, identical to the Z distribution. So the Z distribution, when you get Z values that are equal to 1.96 above and below the mean of zero, you are accounting for 95% of all the observations in the distribution. And this is replicated here with a T distribution set of data with degrees of freedom 4999, because there's only 2.5% left of the distribution on the smaller side and another 25 on the higher side, which is 5% of the distribution. It's almost identical to the Z distribution. With degrees of freedom 4, though, it's a very different story. The standard deviation isn't equal to 0. It's actually equal to 1.41. The skew is not terrible, but the kurtosis is very high, 9.607. So skew is pretty tame. There's not really much skew here at all, but there is a lot of kurtosis. And that's what is being depicted here visually. There's a lot of positive kurtosis in this T distribution with four degrees of freedom 
and we can see that the t values that correspond to the equivalent space in the context of the z distribution here, where we expect 1.96, t value is actually 2.76 with a t distribution. So the tails are much fatter. There are a lot more observations that go beyond the value of 1.96 than you would predict based on the essential z distribution that I've got here. And that's why when we have smaller sample sizes, we need to refer to the t distribution to get accurate results. We cannot rely on the z distribution for a value of 1.96 to demarcate a percentile equal to 2.5 or 97.5. So finally, I've got the t distribution statistics for the degrees of freedom 49 data. And we can see that the kurtosis has dropped very substantially. Instead of 9.6, it's actually 0.13. So it's actually much more normal. There's no skew, very little kurtosis. Skew is 0 0.00, a little bit of kurtosis, not much. And importantly, the percentiles that correspond to 95% of the distribution, leaving only 5% split onto both sides of the distribution, so 2.5 and 2.5 on both sides. It's almost 1.96, but not really. It's 2.02 negative and 2.01. So it's roughly in that ballpark of 2.015, say, that demarcates 95% of the distribution. So 95% of the observations in this distribution are somewhere between negative 2.02 and positive 2.01. So somewhere between there. So it's not terribly different to the essential normal distribution here, but it is a difference. And that's why we have access to the t-distribution and we should use it when we have sample sizes that are smaller. And in fact, we should probably just use it every single time because it's not really resource re intensive for a computer to actually make reference to the t-distribution. But when you actually have the population data or you're not actually trying to make inferences, you can just use z-scores. I mean, that'll be accurate. But we tend to use the t-distribution because we know that the sampling distribution of data associated with smaller sample sizes, it does tend to produce fatter tails. And that's why we need to make reference to it.